Hello folks, Rod Machado here. You're going to get a chance to see something I call the VOR Orienter. It's very valuable even if you're not from the Orient. What this does is it helps you answer abstract VOR test questions. The additional benefit is that it trains your mind to think in terms of the abstract way VOR works. And no, you don't use this in the airplane. It's only meant for answering knowledge test questions. Now, you'll take a small square, 2 inch by 2 inch, of the white sheet of paper that you are given when you walk into the FAA knowledge exam and you will draw the orienter as you see in the upcoming video. And no, you don't have to be a Picasso or a potato to pull this off. It's a very simple graphic to draw. What I don't want you to do is lose this paper. And that's because you have to turn in all the paper that you were given when you first started the exam. If you happen to be in secret agent school, whatever you do, don't eat the paper before you leave the exam because the man or the woe man is not going to let you leave. And they certainly are not going to be happy with you. So have fun, orient yourself, and I think you'll find this very useful. I'm going to show you a handy little technique used to answer VOR orientation questions on the FAA exam. You're going to draw something called the VOR orienter and it's a picture that looks just like this. It's a square with four quadrants and VOR omni heads in each quadrant with two from flags and right and left needles appropriately. Now, what this is going to do for you is allow you to answer VOR questions that, well, quite frankly, are uh, rather abstract on the FAA exam. After all, flying with a VOR omni head in the airplane is one thing, and it's a heck of a lot easier in many cases than sitting down at a desk trying to figure out what the FAA has in mind when they give you a VOR omni head with a right needle or a from indication or a left needle with a to indication and say, where are you at on this chart showing a VOR compass rose? This will make it a whole lot easier. So when you walk into the FAA's office, you're going to take their eight and a half by 11 sheet of white paper. You're going to tear out a square portion, two inch by two inch, and you're going to draw the VOR orienter exactly as you see it here with the symbols, everything precisely as you see it. To use the VOR orienter, you're going to place it directly on the center of the VOR in question, and then you're going to rotate it to the direction shown in the OBS, the Omni Bearing Selector, in this case 090 degrees. So we rotate our VOR orienter to point to 090 degrees. Now, if the OBS said 330 degrees, we would rotate our VOR orienter to 330 degrees, and so on. And here's where the magic happens. Any airplane in the upper right quadrant of the VOR orienter will have a left needle with a from indication. Any aircraft situated in the bottom left-hand quadrant will have a right needle with a two indication. Any airplane in the bottom right-hand corner of the VOR orienter will have a left needle with a two indication, and so on. And if the Omni Bearing Selector is rotated to 240 degrees, then I would rotate the VOR orienter to 240 degrees. And anything in the pink quadrant, as shown in the VOR orienter, upper left-hand quadrant, reference to where the arrow points will be identified by a from indication with a right needle. And if I'm located anywhere along this area that's perpendicular to the direction the OBS points, I'll have the appropriate needle indication as shown in the VOR orienter, but I either won't have a to from flag showing or the to from flag may say off. In essence, I'm in the zone of ambiguity. Okay, let's put our VOR orienter to work. Here's your first question. Your VOR is tuned to Jamestown VOR. There it is. And your airplane is located over Bryant Airport. Which VOR indication is correct? There's Bryant Airport, and here are three VOR Omni heads for selection. Now, VOR Omni head number one has its OBS pointed to 210 degrees. It has a left needle with a two indication. So, we're going to take our VOR orienter and we're going to put it directly over Jamestown VOR, which is in the middle of Jamestown Airport. We're going to rotate the VOR orienter to point in the direction of the OBS setting, which is 210 degrees. Now, 
look at the VOR Omni head given, it's a left needle with a two indication, and find out what quadrant that is shown in the VOR orienter. We're in that area. However, Bryant Airport is not in the area of Magenta. Looking at Omni head number two, the OBS is set to 210 degrees, same direction, but we have left needle with a from indication. Where do you see a left needle with a from indication on the VOR orienter? Oh, the right hand top quadrant as shown on the VOR orienter. So VOR Omni head number two doesn't represent the location of Bryan Airport because that's not where Bryan Airport is located. So let's try VOR Omni head number three. The OBS is set to 030 degrees on Omni head number three. It shows a from indication with a left needle. So the first thing we're going to do is rotate our VOR orienter to 030 degrees and ask ourselves which quadrant, which of the four quadrants shows a left needle with a from indication. Therefore, if we are located over Bryan Airport, our VOR would show a left needle with a from indication. Consequently, VOR selection number three accurately represents our location over Bryan Airport. Okay, let's try another example. Here's your question. Your VOR is tuned to Bonham Vortac and your airplane is located over the town of Sulphur Springs. And just as an aside here, you've taken a special precaution to gain a little more altitude because the town's name has the word sulphur in it. So, which of the three VOR indications is correct? Well, let's take our VOR orienter. Let's place it directly over Bonham VOR, which is, you can barely see the VOR in the top left-hand quadrant of the picture here, but we're going to place our VOR orienter over that. We're going to orient it in direction of 210 degrees because the first VOR Omni head shows 210 degrees. Now we're going to ask ourselves which quadrant of the VOR orienter shows a right needle with a two indication, and it's the bottom left hand quadrant respectively based on the VOR orienter's direction. And it's pretty clear that Sulphur Springs is not located deep into the area of Pink Fade. It is, however, right on the line, which means it's probably in the zone of ambiguity. But let's examine two of the other VOR indications to find out for sure. So, would Omni head number two represent our position over Sulphur Springs? Well, the OBS is pointed to 030 degrees. We have a two indication. So let's rotate our VOR orienter to 030 degrees and ask ourselves if the centered needle with the two indication would represent a location over Sulphur Springs. And no, it won't because that would imply that we are directly on the 030 degree course to the VOR. Looking at Omni head number three, we see that the OBS is set to 0, 3, 0 degrees, but there is no to or from indication, meaning that we are in the zone of ambiguity. That places us right at the changeover point where to becomes from. And it looks like Sulphur Springs is located right along that point, actually close enough. And therefore we can still have a left needle, but no to or from indication instead an indication of ambiguity. So VOR Omni head number three accurately represents our location over Sulphur Springs. So practice drawing the VOR orienter from memory and use it when you answer FAA knowledge questions. And no, it's not intended to be used in the airplane. It's intended to be used only to answer paper-based knowledge FAA questions about VOR orientation, which can be quite abstract sometimes.